A momentous shift is underway in Singapore's political landscape. The stage is set, the spotlight focused, as Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong prepares to bid farewell after nearly two decades at the nation's helm. At 72, his departure was delayed due to unforeseen disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and some succession plan hiccups. However, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Lawrence Wong is now poised to inherit the mantle once Lee officially steps aside on May 15, 2024. But wait, there's more to this riveting tale than just a changing of the guard. Strap in as we journey through the highs and lows of Lee's tenure, unearthing the triumphs, the tribulations, and the shadows that threaten to stain an otherwise illustrious legacy. Watch till the end as we reveal the ugly saga that would leave an indelible mark on his time in office. Before we dissect Lee's tenure, let's first cast our gaze upon the man himself. Born during the era of British colonial rule, Lee is the eldest son of Singapore's first Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew. Armed with intellect and ambition, Lee Hsien Lung first embarked on a military career that culminated in his ascent to Brigadier General by age 32. Politics beckoned in 1984, leading to Lee's appointment as Singapore's third Prime Minister in 2004, yet inheriting the legacy of his father was no small feat. Lee Kuan Yew is widely regarded as one of the most influential leaders in modern history, celebrated for his visionary leadership and transformative policies that turned Singapore from a struggling post-colonial port city into a global economic powerhouse. As Lee Hsien Lung assumed his father's mantle, the weight of expectations and inevitable comparisons loomed large. These comparisons not only intensified scrutiny, but also shaped the narrative of his leadership journey. So did Lee rise to the occasion? In his inaugural address to the nation, Lee unveiled a slew of reforms aimed at bolstering education and social welfare. These initiatives included a commitment to ramp up the recruitment of teachers and to reform the teaching of mother tongue languages to better cater to individual aptitudes. Additionally, he expanded the baby bonus scheme to incentivize mothers of a fourth child, extended paid maternity leave from 8 to 12 weeks, and granted female civil servants access to medical benefits previously available only to their male counterparts. Among these measures, the transition of the civil service from a five-and-a-half-day work week to a five-day work week was the most well-received. Since then, Singapore has witnessed a series of transformations, including revisions to the Central Provident Fund system, substantial adjustments to the tax framework, and a significant pivot towards a service-oriented economy. Additionally, pathways for education in Singapore have expanded, providing more opportunities for learning and skill development. Under Lee's leadership, Singapore's economy has evolved into a more sophisticated and globally connected city-state. Over time, he has steered Singapore towards not only economic growth, but also the development of robust social safety nets. However, Lee's tenure was not without its trials. He navigated Singapore through terrorism threat and escalating tensions between the US and China, along with the rise of trade protectionism and several other crises that tested Singapore's resilience and leadership. In the initial phase of his leadership, Lee ignited a heated discussion by advocating for the development of two integrated resorts, a move that challenged Singapore's traditional stance against gambling. Despite encountering resistance from both the public and certain members of parliament, the government ultimately approved the project in April 2005 to boost economic competitiveness and tourism revenue. Fast forward to today, these integrated resorts situated in Marina Bay and Sentosa stand as vital contributors to Singapore's GDP. A shining testament to Lee Hsien Lung's visionary leadership, with the initial doubts faded into insignificance. But this was just the beginning of the challenges that lay ahead. In 2008, the global economy was rocked by the financial crisis, casting a shadow over Singapore's renowned economic resilience. The nation experienced a staggering 12.5% decline in GDP, becoming the first Asian country to slip into recession during this period of chaos. Singapore's financial, construction, and manufacturing sectors bore the brunt of the downturn, underscoring the severity of the crisis. Governments worldwide mobilized massive resources to avert catastrophe, injecting trillions into their economies. In Singapore, Lee Hsien Lung's administration took bold measures, 
tapping into the country's reserves for the first time to the tune of $5 billion in 2009, aimed at bolstering the economy. These decisive actions paid off. By 2010, Singapore's economy rebounded with remarkable vigor, boasting a growth rate of 10%, ranking among the fastest-growing economies globally. Weathering such a crisis early in his tenure underscored Lee's pedigree as Prime Minister. But the ultimate litmus test arrived in 2020, with the COVID-19 pandemic sweeping in like a storm. Yet, Lee Hsien Lung displayed decisive leadership and swift action. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, he wasted no time in rolling out a comprehensive suite of measures aimed at safeguarding public health. From bolstering testing capabilities to executing meticulous contact tracing efforts and imposing stringent quarantine measures, no stone was left unturned. Singapore led the charge by becoming the first country in Asia to secure the Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine for its citizens, ensuring widespread immunization. While the pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in public health systems, Singapore's healthcare infrastructure stood firm resilient even at the peak of the crisis. The nation's robust financial reserves provided crucial support, enabling Li Xian Lung's administration to roll out substantial relief measures, shielding both the economy and its people from the worst of the storm. Through transparent communication and unwavering guidance, Li Xian Lung steadied the ship, providing a sense of stability and assurance to the nation during turbulent times. Yet, Amidst the triumphs, setbacks marred Lee's legacy. The 2011 general election dealt a blow to his political party after the party's vote share plummeted to a historic low of about 60%. The loss of the first ever group representation constituency, Aljuni GRC, to the opposition only added salt to wound. This outcome stemmed from citizens' dissatisfaction with several key issues, including the influx of low-skilled immigrants, frequent breakdowns in the rail transport system, and the soaring cost of living. Particularly concerning were grievances about housing affordability, the widening wealth gap, and the perceived exorbitant salaries of government ministers. Recognizing the public's discontent, midway through the election campaign, the Prime Minister issued a rare apology to voters for these shortcomings. However, criticisms persisted, echoing concerns about governance and accountability. Following the elections, Li Xian Lung and his ministers faced a significant salary reduction of approximately 36% in response to public outcry over their high remuneration. Despite this cut, Li remained as the world's highest paid leader. Undoubtedly, this was a steep lesson learned. However, since the 2011 elections, Li Xian Lung and his party have shown improved performance in subsequent elections. Despite the hurdles he confronted, it's undeniable that Li Xian Lung has adeptly propelled Singapore into a new era of progress. Nevertheless, his commendable achievements would forever be eclipsed by a controversy that was both embarrassing to the nation and damaging to his father's revered legacy. In June 2017, a high profile family dispute erupted between Li Xian Lung and his brother Li Xian Yang and sister Li Wei Ling. Regarding the fate of their father's house at 38 Oxley Road, the late Lee Kuan Yew had inserted a demolition clause in his final will, stipulating that the house should be torn down if his daughter is no longer residing in it or closed to the public if demolition was unfeasible. The core of the conflict revolved around the handling of Lee Kuan Yew's will, which underwent its seventh revision. This dispute erupted into the public sphere in 2017 when Li Xianyang and Li Weiling accused their brother of attempting to preserve the family home for political purposes, directly contravening their late father's intentions to demolish the house. They further allege that Li Xinlung aimed to establish a political dynasty by grooming his son, a public servant, for future political leadership roles. Moreover, they expressed feeling threatened by Li Xianlong's purported abuse of his influence within the Singaporean government to advance his own agenda, resulting in a loss of confidence in his leadership. In response to these serious allegations, Li Xianlong strongly denied the accusations and brought attention to the process surrounding their father's will. He emphasized that the drafting of the document departed from the usual protocol. As it was not overseen by Lee Kuan Yew's customary legal counsel, 
but instead by Li Xian Yang's wife, Li Suet Fern and her law firm. This raised concerns about the legitimacy and impartiality of the will's preparation, adding another layer of complexity to the ongoing dispute. In an effort to address the escalating tensions and provide clarity on the matter, a special parliamentary session was convened to thoroughly investigate the issue. The Parliament subsequently concluded that there was insufficient evidence to substantiate claims of abuse of power, bringing the matter to rest. Li Xianlong also issued a public apology for the family feud, acknowledging its negative impact on Singapore's reputation. Calls for legal action to clear his name were met with reluctance, as he refrained from suing his siblings for defamation to avoid further straining family relations and tarnishing his parents' legacies. Tensions escalated further when Lee Suet Fern received a 15-month suspension from practicing law in 2020 for her role in preparing the will. Despite the absence of evidence of dishonesty in her interactions with her father-in-law, she was deemed guilty of grossly improper professional conduct. But that was not the end. In the build-up to the 2020 general election, Li Xian Yang shook up the political scene by throwing his weight behind the Progress Singapore Party, a move that injected a fresh jolt of energy into the ongoing Li family saga. Taking to social media, he addressed the nation in a captivating Facebook Live video. Delivering a powerful message, the PAP has lost its way, he declared, highlighting a perceived shift from the principles established during his father's tenure. The drama surrounding the Lee family doesn't seem to be abating anytime soon. Lee Xian Yang and his wife, amidst the ongoing saga, have taken a drastic step by placing themselves in self-imposed exile. This move comes in the wake of police investigations into allegations of the couple providing false evidence in judicial proceedings. Their decision to depart Singapore, particularly after reneging on a police interview they had initially agreed to attend, has sparked further controversy. Adding fuel to the fire, Li Xian Yang's Facebook post paints a picture of persecution, claiming that his family is under siege by Singaporean authorities. As the dust settles on this latest development, it's hard not to see the lamentable nature of the situation especially against the backdrop of Li Xianlong's distinguished tenure. Yet his legacy now bears the indelible mark of a family feud, a saga laid bare for the world to witness, destined to linger in memory for years to come. As Li Xianlong's era draws to a close, all eyes shift towards Lawrence Wong, poised to take over the leadership. But did you know that the journey towards Singapore's political succession was far from smooth sailing? Watch this video to find out more.